available and you guys can begin with questions, guys and ladies. Hey, Matt, it's Elena. Um, I guess off the top yesterday, you told us you were not going to get involved in drills and stuff, and that was not the case today. So just what was up with that today? I, I, well, to be clear, I think I said I'm not going to hit anybody. So I, I hit the bag, <laughs> which is way better. I, I, didn't, I didn't realize there was a camera on me. It's my fault. Um, I, uh, you know, I just walked by the D-line, and I was just having a little fun with them, like, you know, saying, hey, I can do it. You know, they were all doing it, and I said, I can do it. Watch. So, um, and then I got off I got off the field and walked into my phone, and I had guys I've coached before send it, send, already started sending it to me, laughing at me. So, <laughs> hopefully, uh, hopefully, at least I didn't get hurt. I guess that's the positive thing. Uh, Coach, yesterday we talked to Taylor Moten. Uh, can you talk about him and just what he's looked like during training camp? Um, I think he's, uh, I think he's, you know, one of one of the one of the really bright young players, you know, on the team. Um, really, really smart player, uh, physical, um, constantly working to get better. And, uh, you know, when I, when I got here and watched the tape from last year, I really liked what he did last year. And I think the way he plays and the things that he does really fit our, our scheme. So I've been very pleased with him so far. Coach, Teddy shared just now that when he got his opportunity last year in New Orleans, he didn't feel like he was ready. And how important the uh, – not just saying, you know, be ready when your number's called is, but actually – living that and putting everything behind it and how he's imparted that to PJ and Will. What have you seen out of him, not only as a leader, but also out of them to make sure that they are ready should the opportunity present itself? Well, you know, I, I walked up last week and um, he and he and Will, like, you know, he has a, he has a PlayStation or an Xbox. I don't really know the difference. Um, he's got Madden and he's kind of built our playbook in Madden and uh you know, he was showing Will how he uses it, and they were they were playing together. And you know, there's just at the end of the day, I think he's confident enough in himself that you know he knows that uh, he wants to help the team, help the guys around him, and that's just kind of who he is. He's kind of always out there coaching and 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 giving feedback to the guys, but the, you know, to the receivers and running backs and the guys on the offense, so that we're all on the same page. But I've been uh, very impressed with his demeanor and the way in which he um, you know coaches the other two quarterbacks and helps them and. That whole room, I think I think we have a really good quarterback room, and I think uh, we have a really good quarterback coach in Jake Peets. Um, but I like the way that they uh, go about their business. I mean, we're getting three guys reps, and they're all doing a really nice job right now. Hey, Matt, you uh, obviously only have one punter, one kicker, both of whom got work today, and a good bit of, good bit of work. How do you make sure, without any extra legs around this camp, that you know you don't overdo it with those two guys? Just, just the schedule. I mean, that they have a, they have a kicking schedule that uh, that they follow. Like you know, they didn't kick yesterday, so it's it's two days, just like it would be in season. It's two days, and then you know we, we take we take time off. So, um, we'll uh, you know we do special teams like yesterday when they're not kicking. You know, we use the jugs machines and other things, but we'll just make sure we keep the reps limited to them. And you know, we script everything out. We predetermine everything based upon you know. What, what we think is right, you know, all the way to the same in every position. And then we just, you know, have the discipline to stick to the schedule. You know, sometimes when, as a coach, you know, a guy misses a kick or a guy makes a kick, you know, you want to add more, take more off. We just try to be very, very, very disciplined about sticking to the schedule. Hey, Matt, Jonathan Alexander with the Shot Observer. Hope you're doing well. Thank you. Yeah, yeah we saw uh, Mike Davidson and Kawan Short show up a little bit late to the bubble. I know Kawan is coming off that shoulder surgery, but how are they health-wise? They, they, they showed up late because I gave them the morning off to take their kids to school for the first day or be with their kids virtually. I gave every coach, staff member, and player who has kids, I think, should be there for their kids' first day of school. Even if it's virtual, they should have breakfast with them and and help them get on the computer. Or they should drive them to school or whatever. So, you know, a lot of times, a lot of times people say they believe in stuff, but they don't really do it. You know, I, I believe very much in family, and I think being a father is the, one of the most important is the most important thing that that I am and our players are. And so I I ask the players to please take that time, 
And I made a point to the team at the end, you know, what a pro KK is and what a pro uh, Mike Davis is that they did that. And then they were there for, you know, they were there for, you know, the beginning of practice pretty much. I and mean, they missed like just the first period. Um, you know, they didn't stop at Starbucks and get a coffee and relax, you know, they, they got there. So, um, but health wise, I think they're both good. You know, KK is very you know, diligent. I see him in there every morning doing his uh, rehab for his shoulder. And, um, but yeah, they're both health wise are just, it's just based upon family. Hey Matt, um, Vince from the Right Report. Um, TJ Green has looked to get quite a lot of snaps at outside corner the last couple of days from what we've seen. Um, given the last time he was sort of getting regular playing time with the Colts, he was playing more of a box safety role. Where did the idea come from to play him more at corner? And was that something that, that's come from, from this preseason? Or was that something that was, that was sort of planned when he was signed uh, during last season? Well, you know, I didn't, I didn't sign him, so I'm not really sure, you know, what, what they were thinking, you know, last year, you know, I'm not sure what, what the thought process was, but, you know, we, um, we remember him as a player in college, you know, and, and I know people have tried to turn him into a safety. Um, we thought, you know, with his size speed, and when I say we, you know, Jason Simmons, Evan Cooper, they thought, hey, let's train in the corner and then see where he goes. If he goes to safety, great. If he goes to nickel, great. Um, and he's had a really good off season. He's been, um, He's got all the talent in the world, and he's uh, his process has become really good. I mean, he's become very diligent about taking notes and being good in the meetings, and um, he's out there now. And, and um, you know, we can we can kind of – we know he has versatility. We know we can put him in a lot of different places. But anytime you have that kind of length at corner, you know, when you're that tall and that big, it's it's uh, it's a real bonus. So we're working with him, and, and uh, just like all the guys, you know, we're, we're kind of uh, – the way we look at football is – as positionless as possible. The better we, the more we do that, the better we do that. Matt, this is a Miles Simmons from Panthers.com. Just wondering, generally, what do you look for in the first day of pads um, when you're going through practice and training camp? And do you feel like you saw it today? Yeah, you know, I, I, I just, you know, it's again, it's going to sound like coach speak, but I'm, I just always ask our guys, you know, just, just have a certain, we have a certain standard that we want to play at and practice at to maintain that. And then go out there and, and just try to get 1% better every day. You know, if you have 80 guys and they all get 1% better, then, you know, you're 80% better. You know? And uh, um, I, I like the way our team practices. Um, I like I like it a lot. They're, they're fun to practice. They were jawing at me at the end because they wanted to continue to, you know, go offense versus defense. And I called the point and I ended it because I, I wanted to stick to the schedule. So, um, you know, I think sometimes the first day in pads, people, guys have a tendency to play a little bit slower. You know, they're just trying to get used to the pads for the first time and all that. Um, but I thought our guys played pretty fast. And I thought, you know, our com com uh, competitive periods were good. I thought our teach periods were good. And, um, you know, we just have to, as a coaching staff, we got to work overtime to make sure we get all the details of the football right. Because football comes down to effort, speed, and it comes down to details. And, and our effort and speed are good, but, you know, we have to work on the details. Matt, Josh Graham, Sports Up Triad. I know you said you didn't know the camera was on you during the D-line drill, but just give me a sense. Teddy said he loves seeing coaches flying around, and Trey kind of had the same feeling of that too. Just the general reception you get when they see their coach doing push-ups and they see their coaches involved in drills. Um, you know, you, you know, we're not doing it for the players to, you know, to, you know, for them to say, you know, for, for them to say anything other than just like, you know, I think football is fun, you know, and so I want to have fun at practice. You know, I think, you know, the meetings, getting here early in the morning, staying late, that, that's not as much fun, but the, the football part for me is a lot of fun. And so trying to make sure that, you know, we're constantly doing fun things at practice. We're constantly flying around, even like the competitions we've been doing, you know, we did the old golf competition last week. We did the hot dog eating contest, like, you know, in, in a time and place where we're kind of all six feet away, away from each other, where we're all um, wearing masks, you know, just anytime we can just have fun, man, and just um, fly around and play a game that we love. And that, 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 you know, that, that, that to me is what it takes. And, and I, I always want the players to know that, you know, we're in this together. You know what I'm saying? I mean, this, you know, that's, that's easier said than done, but it's never us versus you. And it feels that way a lot of times when you're a player, right? It feels like it's, it's us versus them, but it's not that we're all working to try to have, you know, the best team that we can possibly have. And so, you know, just, just that sense of, hey, you know what, you guys are running, I'm going to run with you, you guys are doing drills, we're going we're gonna to hop in there when we can. Just, I think it all, um, it all, it, it all adds to it. And, um, you know, the last thing is, I think, you know, I think football, you know, they're, 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 iron sharpens iron. There should be a sense of, you know, we walk out on the field, man, we're, we're here to get something done. And so when you see defensive coaches sprinting to the ball, when you see offensive coaches, 
you know, chasing the ball. I mean, we are trying to make sure that we practice faster than anyone else. And that's not the speed of practice. That's the speed of how fast we play. And um, so everyone, it's all hands on deck to get that done. Coach, what have you seen out of Trenton Cannon since you brought him in earlier this month? Well, you know, we brought him in with a purpose, you know, of, of you know, we, we know he's a, a special teams, you know, player who's had a lot of great production. Um, you know, he, he's been a little bit limited with, uh, you know, a hamstring, so we had to be smart with him. But um, but when he's gone, yeah, he's really gone. And uh, to me, you know, um, you can talk and talk and talk about special teams, but until you get guys who are great special teams players, you know, you, you'll never really truly – truly turn the field in your favor. And so um, it's my job as the head coach and it's Marty's job as the general manager to give Chase and Ed and the, and, and the team guys like Trenton who are fantastic special teams players who can also help on offense and, um, and who also can help on defense. And so I think that we have some guys that, you know, between you know, Jemerson and, and uh, Cannon and Farrell Cooper, and we have some guys that we think can really, really you know, do some things for us on special teams. Hey, Matt, David Newton. Um, Teddy was telling us today about how he saw that Alex Smith has been cleared and he wants to reach out to him because he kind of understands what it took to come back from a horrific uh, injury. What do you remember about when you first saw Teddy's injury? And um, what's it say about Teddy that he wants to reach out to Alex? Well, you know, the only thing I really remember about Teddy's uh, deal was when he came back and finally played. And you know, I think I said it when we signed the emotion, you know, when he finally got on the field um, in Minnesota and then the, the emotion of his teammates, you know, who came over and recognized how hard he had worked. And, um, you know, when you get injured, I mean, it, it's a long, long, long process to come back. And especially when you have a really, really difficult injury, but on any injury, you know, it, it's, it's a year of your life. It's a year of your life that a, something has been taken from you and B you have to change everything you do just to have a chance to come back and with all that uncertainty. And so, you know, um, I think it says something special about Teddy that he gets it. Um, and you know what, I don't, you know, I don't want to talk about other guys on their teams other than just to say this. I watched that documentary of Alex Smith and to see that he's playing is just a credit to him. And I saw on Twitter, uh, his his kids, man. I mean, you know that 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 that, just, that brought joy to my heart. You know them 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 him and his wife. You know, champagneing or whatever they were doing. You know, spraying it all over him. Uh, you can tell he's a good man, and I'm glad he's back. Hey Matt, did any uh, coaches take you up on the first day of school offer? And it looked like you kind of welcomed K1 and Mike back. And, and you know what what'd you say to them when they got to practice? Uh, I, I, well, A, I made sure that they were warm. I didn't want them to just to try to jump in. So I was like, hey, are you guys okay? Um, and then with, um, and then with uh, you know, KK, I, I, I told them both. And like I said, I told the team at the end, I told them both. I appreciated them being pros, like getting that done, but also getting back to practice. Because, you know, they understand that if they're not at practice, someone else has to take more reps. And, um, I mean, I, I just can't speak enough about K1 short. Like, just the guys are pros, pro, and, and, and Mike as well. Um, yeah, I mean, coaches, um, you know, coaches, uh, uh, coaches have taken their kids to school and, and uh, I don't think any of them came, didn't make it to practice. Uh, we only really have, we have some with some young kids. Um, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to take my daughters to the bus stop on Thursday. You know, they, they get on the bus really early, so I'll get, I'll be able to get in on time. But um, uh, yeah, I mean, our, our coaches, I think Chase, I think Chase took his kids to school. I wasn't sure if it's today or tomorrow. Um, I, I went to the, I went to the eye doctor this morning for my appointment and they told me it was Tuesday and I said, yeah, I know guys. Yeah, I'm here. And they said, well, it's Monday. I mean, it's, uh, it's training camps. So I can't even tell you what day it is, but uh, um, yeah. So I, I'll take my kids or I'll drop my daughters off at the bus on Thursday, you know, you know, first day. That's something we really, I've really never had a chance to do um, as a coach, but you know what, with, with this ramp up schedule and the schedule that we have and not being away, um, I'm going to take five minutes and, um, and, and spend that time. And I expect all my coaches to do it as well. Hey, Matt, it's uh, Jason Huber with uh, WFNZ. We were just talking to Trey Boston, and he mentioned how – I don't know how much you know about it, but he mentioned Thieves Avenue is still going to be there as long as he's around. But going off of that, I mean, how much do you know about, you know, that Thieves Avenue that Boston's always done while he's been here? And, um, and how much has he been as a leader and bringing that energy um, in the secondary? I, I'll be honest with you. I don't, I don't, I don't really know it about Thieves Avenue. I've heard him I – I hear him talk about the Thieves all the time. Um, 
you know, he, he's a, he's a guy that brings energy and spirit to everything, you know, in the, in the, in the team meeting at night, you know, shoot, he'll grab the mic and get up and he'll start singing. <laughs> you know, I mean, he, um, he, here's what I know about Trey Boston. He loves football and, um, he likes to practice. He likes to play. He likes to talk about football. He's a professional. Um, so, you know, he's, he's exactly the kind of type of guy that I like to coach, you know, handles his business is coachable, trying to, trying to coach the young guys and mold the young guys, show them what it means to be a pro and he does things the right way. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm fired up to have a chance to coach him. Is everybody good? I actually have one, Bruce. So was All right, go ahead, Mike. Uh, Coach Mike Salarte, Spectrum News One. With the slow ramp up, you finally get into pads. And I know that as the head coach, this always feels like football to you because of the preparation and everything. But does it finally feel like you're in camp now that guys were in pads? And even though the hitting might have been uh, at a slower pace on, on the first day in pads? Um, no, uh, yeah, it definitely felt like football. And, um, um, you know, I, I don't, I want to make sure I, I don't know if you're, uh, if, I, if I said what I said before wrong, I want to make sure what I said was no, normally I'm used to, I'm used to the first day being a little slower and I actually thought it was pretty fast today. I was, I was, I was pleased with, with the guys, um, for that, but yeah, I, I agree with you. It, fi it feels like football to get out there. Like, you know, I have the mask on and all that stuff. I don't even notice it anymore. Like you're getting to see guys, personalities, you're getting to know guys, you're getting to see, you know, which guys, you know, which guys are like what some guys get angry as practice goes on. Some guys get fired up. Some guys get this. And, um, you know, as a team, you're trying to have these shared experiences so that you can build a sense of camaraderie and a sense of brotherhood by going through things together. And they're doing that. And the biggest thing is that they allow you to coach. They allow you to coach. Them. You know, I mean, like, you know, if we're not playing to a certain standard, you can, you, you can, you can get after guys and guys are hungry for that because they want to be good. So um, in this crazy times that we're all going through, you know, it, it, as our society to get out on the, the grass and, and actually practice and, and have it just be football um, and football being done at a high level. It, it's a lot of fun for me. Hey Matt, what have you seen so far from the later round guys like Kenny Robinson and Stanley Thomas Oliver so far? Yeah, they're going to be really good players. You know, they're talented. Um, they can run. They're coachable. Um, you know, in the back end right now, uh, early in camp, uh, especially versus our offense, you know, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that they're seeing. But, you know, those guys are talented. They're going to be good players. You know, they just have to – they just have to not worry about, hey, am I good or am I bad right now? Did I do that right? They just need to just – they just need to work, put their head down and just go day by day and – They'll look up one day here really soon, and they'll be really good players. Hey Matt, uh, it's Josh from the Riot Report. How do you um, how do you manage the the reps for the two guys that are competing for the backup quarterback spot? Um, they, they, as, yeah, yeah, they split. The, I'm sorry. Yeah, they split the two reps. Um, they both played really, really, really well, you know. And so, um, you know, we have Teddy's taking all the ones reps, and then uh, those guys uh, take the two reps and. You know, we, 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 do, we, we do, you know, we, we start out practice when we're inside, you know, we're, we're doing a team, team drills inside and then we, then we come outside, go to the individual, then we go back to team drills. So we're getting a lot of good reps and they're getting a lot of chance to get on tape. And, um, but yeah, we'll, we'll split those guys with the two and the three. I think this year more than ever, you know, you need to have everybody ready. And I believe that we have three guys that are good enough to start a quarterback. Um, they might not be good enough yet, but they will be. When I say good enough, yet, just learning the system and all that. But, um, but I'm really pleased to see where, where they're headed. All right, we'll take uh, one more question. Hey, man, Teddy was saying that uh, he, he could be in the four by one team on this on this football team if he had one. Um, he put Christian and um, Robbie and Curtis in there. Is, is Teddy? Yeah, I think Teddy's. Uh, I think. I think mean, Teddy has a high opinion of himself in terms of his speed, but I, I'll have to see it first before I can comment. I have not seen it yet. Let me just say that. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you all very much. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, guys. Nice.